Hi everyone, Angelina from Sparkling Diva and I'm showing you the sets so I can put it, uh, the camera down in a minute and I can sit down. Uh, this is a reading for uh, Will I Find New Love in June? And uh, well I've done six, sorry, five sets and crystals on them for you to choose. And they are runes but I turn them over because I'm not doing anything with the runes, it's just the crystals. I'll show you the crystals. I should zoom in. Tormelonated quartz, amethyst, uh, snowflake obsidian, rose quartz, and then we have tiger's eye and clear crystal. And this, I haven't a clue what the left one is really. <laughs> yeah, I just call it quartz with inclusions and amethyst. And then for the last ones, the numbers five, we have red jasper and rose quartz. So again, Slowly zooming out so you can, you can have a look and you can choose. And I'm going to pause the recording and sit it down. Right, so that was that. I hope you've been able to make a choice. Otherwise, go back and just have a look at the sets and the crystals so you can do that. Uh, before I begin, I just want to announce that I have a another wonderful five-day challenge coming up just for the ladies. Sorry, guys, if you're watching, the reading is going to be for men as well. But the challenge that I'm offering, the five-day challenge, is not. It's just going to be for the women, for the ladies. And uh, it's on how to manifest love into your life. So if you're looking for your true love and it's not working out, you don't know, you know, it's, it's just not working out. You're attracting the wrong type of guy for you or you just don't know how to go about it, etc., etc., then this might be the thing for you. So, um, yeah, by all means, just check it out. I will record uh, a video on it where I tell you a, a bit more of the details. Uh, it's going to be in the same style as the five-day uh, challenges I've done on self-love and on being feminine, your feminine energy, etc., so it's going to be in-depth, it's going to be great, it's going to be wonderful. It really is, it's really going to be good. Uh, so I'll, I'll link to the other video at the end of this one, if you're interested in that. I will also put links underneath this video in the description box uh, to my website and to that video so you can check it out. If that rings your bell, if that really, you know, if you really want help with it and um, find out how you can finally, finally, finally attract that true love into your life, the right partner for you. And uh, yeah, also if this reading, which I'm going to start uh, in a minute now, if this reading um, goes into a part two, which happens if it reaches four gigabytes, I will have to look into that, why that happens, I really don't know. Uh, but as it is, it does happen. And then I will also link in in the video itself with one of these cards that you can click to part two, just to make it easier for you if you you know to continue watching. So, well, ha! Ah, that was all the information. <laughs> uh, then I'm gonna go into it with the numbers one. Move some cards out of the way, and uh, we're going to have a look at the cards for number one. Um, we have release. This, this, this glare is horrible. I can't help that. Sorry about that. It's the light of the camera that came on. Uh, release. Four of Wands. And a Ten of Wands. And Deception. And the Five of Keys from the Akashic uh, Tarot. So will you find new love? I, I do think uh, it looks like you still have to let go of something. There's something in, in your system, in your energy still, um, emotionally, that you have to let go of. And um, because you want this, you want the sharing, etc., etc. But it's, it's almost as if you're, because of, uh, there's still something in your system you're looking at how a relationship should be or what you want or whatever is is not the right image and i get that because these these ones they, they they float in the air and it's almost like an illusion and and yeah i always find that strange that these things are just hanging there right and um 
But right now I get, the, for, for these sets, I get, yeah, it seems to stand out. It's like you have this illusion, this idea, it's almost like a fantasy, it's not, not realistic. And wanting this is realistic, wanting this is, go is beautiful, you know, it's sharing, it's harmony, it's balance, it's, it's also a marriage card the one's for, so that is good. But there is just something underneath um, how you're going about it, or how you feel about it, or how you view it, that is not um, completely positive, it's not completely, um, let's say, pure, because it's still a bit tainted by something that happened that's still not... Um, it hasn't gone yet. It's still in, active in your system. So you'll have to allow that to um, to go from your system first. And that's also what I feel with the deception. Because if you if you now find a relationship, it's like a partner, or you will attract them from that sense of. Um, yeah, with this still active in your system, and then, yeah, I'm trying to phrase that nicely. It's, it's, you are going to manifest from basically an, um, an uh, a fantasy thought or the wrong idea. It can be either a fantasy thought, but it can also be just um, a, like more bitter thoughts about a relationship or whatever. You know, deep down. That there's still some bitterness or anger or whatever that is in your system. That, uh, for instance, like all men are douchebags or all women are gold diggers or you know, if you have still if you still have beliefs like that uh, based on what happened before, then you will attract something. But I feel it's more um, a keeping up appearances thingy. You trying to be someone you're not. You're not, you're not, not really. And maybe that's uh, what you've always done. Um, have allowed yourself to be molded into something you're not, you, you, you really aren't. By uh, friends or maybe family or your past, what happened in the past with past lovers or uh, even in your childhood, you know, if you've been bullied in the past, for instance, that molds you uh, into uh, becoming someone on the outside that you're not. So then you're wearing a mask. It's it's almost like that, like as if you're too, in that sense, you could say submissive. It's not really being submissive, but yeah. Like believes like, well, a, a wife, a housewife has to be this, that or the other. Uh, otherwise she's not going to find a man, no man is going to want a strong woman, so now I have to be timid and demure and just obey. Uh, I don't know, there is some form of deception. You not being you, not really authentically you. And that will wear you out. That will really wear you out. Because it won't lead anywhere. And it's just... Yeah, it's not good, it's not healthy. Again, here I get that feeling as well, the Five of Keys, there's this abundance, wishes fulfilled, and I feel that if you go about it that way, that you may find indeed a partner and a relationship, but look at this scenery, everything's there, there's abundance, etc., but there is no, there are no people there, no happy people, there's no happy couple there, cuddling and kissing and looking at each other with smiles and this, this glint spark in their eyes because they love each other so much, it there's no one there so is that worth it is that worth the price or should you just take the time first to let go and find out um, how you want things to be for real and then start manifesting from that from clarity you know drop the masks drop the uh, the shields and the masks and be authentic be you and I'm not saying that you're just uh, a nasty person or cheating or whatever you know we do this all the time usually to protect ourselves because we've, we've been hurt in the past or we've been molded to be this way by by whomever maybe your mother maybe a teacher children at school a past lover whatever but that is it, you, then you might get the abundance that you'd want in a relationship but that still doesn't mean to say that you're gonna find the happiness that you you want to come with 
with that, you know, you want that to come, you know, whatever, <laughs> you get what I mean. It's empty, it's empty, everything is there except the love. So, yeah, um, that's what you have to work on. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it doesn't look like you're going to find love, real true love in, in, uh, in June. Because you still have some stuff to work on. And that's good, because if you know that, then you can work on that, and then you can start attracting uh, the right one for you. Alright, I'm uh, going to move on to the numbers two. I have to move the camera, hang on. Right. Well, I hope that's going to be a bit better, because the, the camera was in my way, and then I have to sit at a weird angle, and then I'll end up having pain in my shoulder and back and whatever. Uh, anyhow, um, activation, uh, yeah, well, that's what needs to happen, activation, because that brings life, cleans things up, and also, um, yeah, activates, that's, that's uh, so not a stagnant thingy, and I feel for you guys that you have come out of something you have grown tremendously you have grown tremendously and you now have the ability to um, know when you come across someone or something but in, it's a love reading so someone to tell if if they're worth your time or not like she's standing there with all her stuff and uh, she's thinking, well, am I going to go in there or not? Can I do better? Can I find something better? Am I going to be happy here? Is this going to fulfill me? Uh, can I make something out of this? Is this worthy of me? Uh, do I actually really want this or not? Am I going to go somewhere else? This is not necessarily bad. There's light, there's a house, there's a roof. And uh, there's a, f a fountain and water and a stream, and etc., etc. It's green, it's not dry, it's lush. And yeah, it needs a bit of work, but she is really thinking about this, like, uh, is it worth it? Is this really worth my time or not? So I feel that if, if you chose this set, that in the past maybe you would have gone for that without giving it a second thought. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that, I'm going to, you know, put my... Uh, or everything I've got into that and I'm going to make it work, I'm going to make it better, I'm going to make it good and it's going to be fine, it's going to be okay, you're not doing that anymore you are now making clear decisions like um, yeah, just having a look at things and, and rea a real look, a, re a realistic look not like this fantasy thing like oh he's going to change or she's going to change and it's going to work out and no, you're being more far more realistic now and you're really thinking, you, you, you've, it's as if you found your self-worth more so than in the past. And you're now looking at, at this scene, like, is this worthy is, is, of me? You know, uh, you're confident. You know you deserve a good life, a good partner, a good relationship. And also this, um, yeah, you got your ducks in a row. That's what came to me when I saw that card. You've got your ducks in a row. And, um, well, she's obviously very pregnant, so she's about to give birth pretty soon. But um, she's also not really in a hurry to do that anywhere in any specific setting, so to speak. She can take care of herself. She's got abundance. She's got her ducks in a row. The corn is ripe. And she's got this uh, cornucopia. I believe it's called, I'm not entirely sure if I got that right. But she's got the abundance. She can manifest herself. She doesn't need anyone in the sense of being codependent. So she will she will think about it. Is this worth it? Is this where I want to deliver? If this Is this where I want to create new life? Bring new life into the world? Or am I going elsewhere? You know, she's strong. She's warm, she's, she's very warm-hearted and loving and caring. But she's not going to get fooled again, she's strong. She's got her shit together to... <laughs> you know, you know it's, uh, she's empowered. And then we have the, um, the calling in your soulmate. Well, if you're in a place like that, it's also the right place from, you know, to call in your soulmate. 
this wonderful relationship because you're not codependent anymore. You have this discernment to know whether it's right for you or not. And you also, with that, have the willpower to leave it behind and uh, to go somewhere else if need be. So then you're in the right place to start for a calling for your soulmate. You're ready for it. So yeah, it could very well happen for you if you chose this. Balance. Everything is in order. Look how neatly these papers are stacked. Everything is nicely tucked away in the bookcase. The desk is neat and tidy. And uh, the scales are balanced. You have inner balance. And there's light coming in. You're ready to walk through that door towards the light. And you're allowing it in as well. You're allowing the light in. Giving and receiving balance. So yeah, you're ready for it. So for you, I do think uh, it can very well happen in June that you find new love. You're ready for it. And of course, it just then depends on you, on what you do. You know, if you lock yourself into the house for the entire month, then, <laughs> well, you're not likely going to find the love of your life, right? That's, that's, you know, so it depends on you, what you do. But all the external conditions and, and the internal conditions, all the... Everything's right. It's you're on fertile ground. It's everything seems to be right, and it also um, tells you to to make a move, to do something, to go out or whatever, you know, so it doesn't get stagnant. Yeah, so that's good. That's really good. It looks very positive for you. Chances are very high of you meeting your new love in June. Okay, moving on to number three. I'm going to move these out of the way. Number three with the tiger's eye and the clear uh, crystal. We have a perspective, Milky Way perspective. We have breath forest. Then there's two tarot cards. The uh, harvest, which is uh, judgment. Always have to think justice, judgment. <laughs> And we have the uh, Page of Cups, Page of Chalices. Then we have Express Your Love from the Romance Angels. And we have The Scribe, which is a major Akana card from the uh, Akashic Tarot. Right, and go back. I feel that if you chose this, that you have gone through a transformation. Uh, you've ch had a change of... Y your, your perspective has changed. And you had a... You needed like a... A breathe, a time out, a recovery, and, and a pause. Uh, I think if you, <clears throat> sorry, if you chose this set, that you have been single for quite some time, single for quite some time. Maybe not even hurting anymore because of what happened, but just single for 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 whatever reason. Maybe you just didn't find someone, or you you were too busy with other in in other areas of your life, or whatever. But you needed a transformation as well. And you've gone through that, which is the uh, um, judgment card, harvest, and um, and that changed your perspective. And it, you really have gone through quite a change, I feel. And you're now, um, well, basically ready to learn. Also eager to go out there again with a page of cups. And you're, oh, you're basically like a, a blank canvas. And the way you see your relationship or love as well, I feel. You know, you're ready to start painting, to create something new, something wonderful, something new. I feel most of you will not really be influenced all that much anymore from what happened in the past. You're really willing to, to, to just go for it again. But I also feel with this card, uh, even though it's beautiful, express your love, if you look at that man, she is really um, looking at him like, uh, yeah looking up at him and, and, and wanting him and wanting to be accepted by him or whatever. But he, the way he looks, <clears throat> I don't like that. I really don't like that. Also that his hand is there, almost as if he wants to jerk her hand off his shoulder. Like, well, I, you know, as if he doesn't feel it for you the way you feel it for him. And it doesn't matter whether you are, if you're watching, if you are a man or a woman, you are this person. This is the other person. So if you are a man watching, then this is you and that's the other person. And then I feel that you have to be really careful that you... I feel you're still quite vulnerable after this transformation you went through. 
And um, yeah, you're still quite vulnerable. And um, you must be careful that you are not so eager to belong, to want to come home with someone, that you let go of your standards, that you fall for the wrong person, or yeah, you 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 know not don't zoom in, don't lose this new perspective that you've gotten. It's it's you can also see this as zooming in, like a zoom lens zooming. You know this laser focus. If you got that, if you zoom in on one person or, or on having a relationship, on being in a relationship, uh, happy to have found someone again, you might actually lose the the, the bigger picture, the, the 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 healthy perspective that you have gotten. And I feel you had to work quite hard uh, to get there. That's why you're still quite vulnerable. You know, so it's important that you don't lose that. Don't lose that in order to belong or because you want someone so badly or, you know, keep that healthy perspective. Keep that healthy perspective. Also this, um, the scribe. Um, you are this scribe, and these are his, his his pupils, so to speak, you know? He is the master uh, <laughs> uh, scribe, if you want to call it that way. But I, the, what stands out to me is these scrolls on the floor. And I feel you really have to... Um, maybe you've already done that, and if not, then maybe you should do it. Write, make a list of what it is that you need in a relationship and from a partner in order to be happy. And then make uh, write down realistic stuff, right? Not the, the bullshit stuff like he can't have chest hair or she must have a certain size uh, boobs or whatever, you know. That's just bullshit. That's bullshit. We're talking about characteristics, personality, that kind of thing. What do you need in a relationship in order to be happy? What do you need from a partner in order to be happy? Write these lists. Even if it's going to end up being five pages of scrolls or whatever, and you're, you're already writing number six, and maybe even other people, so to speak, other as aspects of you are also writing scrolls, it doesn't bloody matter. Have clarity what you want and what you need so you don't end up in this situation where you've fallen for someone who actually ultimately doesn't want you not the same way you want them then because then you've then then you go back then you go back tremendously in your uh, uh, growth then you, you because then you know then it's gonna damage you you you, you I feel this is this, this is this this was really important an important change and shift transformation a, a shift in perspective and you are still quite vulnerable so yes you are ready to go out there yes you could meet someone yes you could find someone but be very mindful that you you know do this so you don't lose this this that you don't go that you don't step back in your growth and personal uh, development because you don't want that make sure that you uh, go for the right person okay so yeah you could um, uh, th this is basically yeah just 50 50 it can happen it and s certainly go out certainly go out and start dating and maybe you are already dating uh, you know you're ready for that absolutely ready for that just be mindful that you are still vulnerable and that you have to just stand by your boundaries and uh, be realistic. Be realistic. Don't fall for some smooth talker or someone who looks the part or whatever, you know. Just <laughs> really know what you want and, and, and be mindful of that. Does that person offer you what you want? Do you want to be looked at uh, by your partner that way? Or do you want a warm embrace someone who really wants to hold you and who looks at you with love in their eyes and their entire face expressing their love for you is that what you want or is this what you will settle for that's setting that is setting so be mindful of that and yes go out date have fun and <laughs> yeah you can do it you're strong enough but you're still quite vulnerable you have to be aware of that I feel that many of you were not aware aware of that, but you still are. So, if you're aware of it, then no problem whatsoever. Moving on to number four, uh, the people. Um, oh yeah, the uh, if I'm not mistaken, 
the ones with these crystals, the uh, the quartz and the amethyst. Let's see what we got for you. Right, we have compassion, love, compassion. We have uh, the ten of swords, the seven of wands, uh, separation, and we have Uriel and the sphinx. Very interesting set. Very interesting. Right, I paused it because I needed a, <laughs> a coffee. We're going on. Um, with this I feel you're ready for love again. You are. You're ready for it. Uh, but you also love yourself. You have learned an awful lot. You have come a long way. Um, you have suffered. You've been in pain. You've taken the time to heal from that. And now you're ready to go out there again. You're ready for new love. You're ready. You have. Uh, you're willing to take a risk. If you look at how she's standing on that tiny little stool, so close with a skirt to the fire, you know this is risky. That stupid little three-legged stool could could just tip over, and then yeah, then she's gonna hurt herself. Also, her dress or the apron could catch fire because she's so close to it. But she's taking that risk. Why? Because she's putting her defences away, the ones. She's putting the last one away on the wall. She doesn't need it anymore. She doesn't need to hold it anymore. She doesn't have to hold on to the grudges and whatever it is uh, anymore. She's putting them away, but she is keeping them in sight. She's putting them on the mantle so she can still see them. These are also the... This is the lessons that she's learned. She's paid her dues, but it's also her skills. Because because of all the, the things that she's gone through, she has gained wisdom. She got wiser. She knows now what she stands for, what she wants. And that is you, right? That is you. So she's putting that away. She's putting her defenses away. She's willing to take the risk. I mean, yeah, the way she's standing, what she's doing. <clears throat> she, you know, but she is not putting them in, for instance, in the chest. There's a chest there. She also could have put the ones in the chest so she wouldn't see them anymore. But... That's what someone would do who hasn't really recovered. Uh, like, I don't want to see that anymore, I don't want to go there, I don't want to be confronted with it. But she's strong enough to be to see the things that she's gone through, to deal with it, to see it. They don't affect her anymore, she's learned from it. And this is just a reminder, you know, of all the skills she's got from that, and the wisdom, and the, you know... And also a reminder of not ever doing that again, not ever falling for something like whatever happened again <clears throat> and this card separation I feel that you are also because of these things you are strong enough to go out there to start dating and if you meet someone to then uh, clearly be able to tell when whether someone is right for you or not and if you feel that someone isn't right for you to let them go to let them go. And you'll do that nicely, politely. You're not going to be an asshole or a bitch or whatever about it. You're going to do that nicely. I mean, look at her. She's friendly. She's polite. And even though he's getting hurt, he's, he's, he's holding his heart, his heart chakra. But she's still completely open. She's not guarded. She's open. So you're um, going out there. You can, you can go out there and be completely vulnerable and open and so you can make a real connection and also then feel whether someone is right for you or not and if the man is guarded because he's guarded he's wearing armor when a man isn't open when he isn't uh, showing his, his himself his true self just isn't right for you for whatever reason you know it might just simply not be the right match for you then you're just gonna let him go you're not going to go uh, get involved in a relationship uh, again, or I'm inclined to say again, with someone who isn't right for you to try to make it work or whatever. You're not going to get sucked into it anymore. You've got you you've gotten wiser, a lot wiser, and also this um, yeah for me this confirms it because this is uh, Archangel Uriel and the Sphinx is also a major Arcana card. Uh, the Sphinx has got the body of the lion, which is strength, and it's about um, uh, great wisdom, holder of the truth, etc. And Archangel Uriel is basically consulting the Sphinx to learn. And, you know, but it, also the Sphinx has been dug out of the desert 
a great many times. So you are willing to also do that, to also uh, go through trial and error. You know, to if if you meet someone who isn't right for you, you're not going to give up. It's like, okay, no, you're not. You, you you want that love. You want a relationship. You want that love, and you're willing. You 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 know that you might have to go through ten, twenty, whatever dates. I'm not talking relationships. I'm talking about dates to maybe get there, to maybe find that right person for you. So that's not going to discourage you. Like the, the Sphinx had to be dug up, uh, dug out a, a, a great many times out of the, the sands. You're willing to do that too. You're willing to go through that process. It's not going to deter you at all. You might take your time uh, if something, if, if you, you maybe got involved a little bit with a man and then found out he wasn't the right one. You might even then, um, you, you, you will take then the time to go inward, to recover and to find out why it wasn't the right man. Uh, analyze what went wrong, what, uh, how you should go about it differently, and you will then move, get on with it again. You're really quite strong, really strong, standing in your power. And I do feel you're going to find that love as well. You are. Because you're just not going to give up. And you do, it, I also feel you don't need it. It's not like you're codependent or anything. You just want it. You just want it because you know you, you you yeah. In order to feel happy and fulfilled, you you want to be in a relationship, but you're not codependent. Yeah, you're not you're not going to settle, but you're also not going to give up. You're gonna go on and find that person. So go out there, yeah, for sure, absolutely, go out there. And uh, start dating if you're not already doing that. Start dating. You're ready, absolutely ready. Uh, and then I'm going to move on, have a drink again, and move on to the uh, the last set, the numbers five, the people that went for the uh, rose quartz and the red jasper. Oh, well, just have a look at the cards. We have birth and forgiving and learning, the uh, three of cups, the tower, and the music, the harmony. Right. I'm going to put them this way, because that's the order I pull them in, and I feel the story actually also goes in that direction, so to speak. Uh, right, Let's see where I am with time. I'm going to make that nice. Numbers uh, five, I feel that... Um, well, this card is harmony, it speaks of harmony, but if you look at the two people... The two women in there, they actually don't look all that happy, especially that one, this woman. She doesn't look that happy at all. It's like they, there is, as if there is discord in the music they're making. So I feel this is, is, is still, you're in a balance like that. It's still not really in harmony, but also uh, likely in a past relationship, you've had a previous relationship you've had. Uh, but you had this... Uh, it ended up that way. There was discord. The harmony was gone. You were either you or they were not happy anymore, and it can be either in this case. I feel it can be either. So it's either you weren't happy anymore, or you thought things were okay and you were happy, and you totally weren't aware that the other person wasn't happy. I feel for most of you it's that. I feel for most of you it's that, but it can be either in this case. And if you haven't been in a relationship ever yet, which is possible, I feel there is a number of you who chose this who haven't been in a relationship yet, then this is what has gone down in a past life. And then not in a love relationship, but then you weren't in a love relationship. Then you were like more like, for instance, like um, a novice, novice uh, priestess or nun or whatever. Then you, you didn't have a love relationship and then you weren't happy either, then that, that is still affecting you, your love life in, in, in this life, in this current life. And, um, yeah, they, you are not completely ready to be in a healthy relationship at the moment. It, it's a, you're too guarded. You, you have your defenses up. You are, have a problem with being vulnerable, being showing your heart, really. 
uh, being open in, and, and that blocks love coming in. And it could be that you are good at giving. Most people who have a problem, uh, who have their walls up, shields up, can give, but they cannot receive. And that is a problem in, in a love relationship, because if you cannot receive, you cannot be in a healthy relationship, because that's both giving and receiving. Because the other one, the other person, the one who loves you, will also want to give to you. And if you cannot receive that, that will affect them, that will hurt them. Will, you know, that, that they will feel that, it won't make them happy. So it is really vitally important that you are able to do both. And I feel you can't. And this card says the same thing, the forgiving and learning also speaks of uh, old pains from the past. And that your defenses, having your defenses up, um, blocks the, um, creates barriers of love coming in. So there's two cards saying the same thing, and this is a major Akana card, so this is really important. And there's still stuff from the past that's haunting you. I've never seen that before even, and this time I do, these, these, these ghosts, so to speak. You know, like ghosts from the past, they are still haunting you. You have to heal something still. Work on that. If you don't know, uh, if, you have it, is it ha if it's not from a, a previous relationship, then it's something else that uh, happened to you this life, uh, likely in your childhood, that uh, caused you to, to be this way, that you are guarded and then open up so easily, or at all. And um, you must learn that. You have to learn to really be open, more open, and, and yeah, this is celebration, open, sharing, and they're not on guard at all, you know. That's what you have to learn to get to. Also, the uh, birth card from uh, the, the tarot deck. This is also a major arcana card. Um, it speaks of new beginnings and that it is time for that. It is time for a new beginning and a new thing. It can be a new romance, a new relationship, new love. It can also be a new creative project. This can, so this can be also an indication that you have to start a new beginning. You know, get rid of that tower, get rid of this not happiness in uh, you know that that imbalance and so you can get to this and then you love can also or, or love if you've never been in a relationship before can also start coming in this woman is ready able uh, to receive and and the stone hand it always reminds me of that she's buried something there <laughs> and not maybe literally but that she let go something there you know almost maybe you should do a ritual like a forgiveness letter, write a forgiveness letter or whatever, even if it's about yourself, you know, where you let go of whatever uh, happened to you, whomever hurt you, forgive them and bury that, burn that letter, you know, that's letting go as well, that transmutes the energy, and then you are free, and then you can start a new project. This is important for you to do before you can find love. If you, will, uh, if you were to find someone now, it will likely go wrong. It will, you will likely end up getting hurt or, or end up getting miserable in the relationship. It is likely not going to make you happy because you will attract someone who matches this vibration of you not being able to give and, oh, sorry, not being able to receive, not being able to open up to having your barriers up. You will re attract someone who matches that vibration and that will not make you happy. That is not what you're looking for. You're likely, like everyone else, are looking for that wonderful, glorious partner and relationship. And then you also first have to be in this glorious, wonderful vibration and energy yourself. And then you can start attracting that. So, no, I don't think your new love is going to come in. But you can make a huge, um, you can make huge progress in June to get there, to get ready to get to this place and then to have this. If you do that work, if you work on whatever is, is has caused this uh, in you. You know, they're like that like I said, maybe write a letter of forgiveness uh, to people who have hurt you or maybe just yourself, whatever is bothering you that is still yeah, you know, that can help to release that energy, to set yourself free basically. So you can have that new beginning. And then maybe in July you are ready, you know. 
There's no need to rush either, as long as you're making progress. That's good in itself. So you can, yeah, you can go out, but just then go out to socialize with friends. Just have fun and learn to enjoy life again and open up and just socialize, mingle, have a chat with uh, men or women if you are a man watching or whatever. But I don't see you ending up uh, finding your love, your true love this month. So, yeah. You still have work to do first. So, well, who knows, you know, maybe July. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. And if you uh, liked the, uh, the reading, if it resonated with you, then please share or like. Give me some com comments and um, then I'll see you again with another reading really very soon. If you are interested in my five-day challenge on manifesting love, how you can change and go about it in better ways so you also feel better and, you know, get tools to how to attract that love, how to go about it, check out my other video uh, on this five-day challenge and or check it out on my website, the information, and maybe I will see you there. Wishing you a wonderful Whitson Monday, and um, yeah, I will be back soon with another reading. Bye-bye! <laughs>